Hello, and thanks for watching another ARFCOM ballistic test. Today we're going to test some best millimeter. Finally, right? Specifically, we're testing Fioki 180 grain jacketed hollow point. Like many of Fioki's offerings, this is a budget priced, at least during normal times, type of load. I'm always more interested in testing stuff like this because I don't know what's going to happen. The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. <laughs> If you gave me some new premium defense 9mm 124 grain bonded hollow point or a 200 grain solid copper hollow point in 45 AARP, I think I could predict with about 10% accuracy what the velocity, penetration, expansion, and retained weight figures would all be. But budget loads like this are exciting because I don't have any idea how they'll turn out. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNBC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. Let's head out to Cowtown and shoot Fioki 180 grain JHP from a Glock Model 20 into calibrated 10% real ballistic gelatin. First, we'll test with bear gel. Total penetration on the first shot is 16.2 inches. <laughs> this is nice. Sean, look at this. You can see how it's just barely coming out of the back side of the block here. Mm -hmm. Right there. <laughs> just barely kissed this one. If it was a continuous block, maybe it would have made it another quarter inch or so, but the total penetration is going to be 16.1 inches. We see a lot of disturbance up front. The neck is very short. The neck is, looks like I'm going to call it 0 0.7, 0 0.7 inches. And 0.6 inches on the second shot. There is a ton of fragmentation all throughout. This thing just came apart like a bomb. Some of the fragments came off the main track a fair amount. Most of them stayed right in the main track. And that's one of the reasons that we don't like to see fragmentation in pistol rounds because they tend not to improve wounding in any substantive way. Does it hurt in this case? Not necessarily, because the main reason that we don't like to see fragmentation is that it reduces the bullet weight. And when the bullet weight is reduced, that tends to reduce penetration, and it can reduce penetration to the point where it doesn't pass. In this case, it hits 16 inches, so it's a pass, but it's certainly not ideal. Let's take a look at the bottom side of this block here. You can get a better look at some of the fragmentation here. That is gnarly. It looks ugly, and it is absolutely a pass, but it's certainly not ideal. I can get a... That's gonna be very low weight retention. So I saw a piece of jacket material in here, which I measured as the ultimate penetration for the first shot, but it was just a chunk of jacket material, and it probably shouldn't really be counted as the total penetration. So I'm gonna say the real penetration on that first shot was 13.3 inches. At least as far as the core goes. If you wanna count that, piece of jacket material that's on you but as far as the the real bullet that's what happened to the core and of course obviously that looks very much like its brother all right so i'm going to get some denim on this Get another couple shots in here and see if this can still expand when it passes through denim.
Okie dokie. So, <laughs> ironically, the denim seems to have actually improved performance a bit. This first shot came off the top. That happens sometimes. As the bullet's traveling through, it'll take a bit of a curve and come out the top of the side or whatever, it happens. I also <laughs> placed it a little closer to the top than I wanted to. It's totally the bullet's fault, not mine. But we've got two shots in here that we can measure well, and it looks like both of them retained their jacket. So in both cases, we've got a very, or all three cases, we've got a very short neck at half an inch, and 0.6, and 0.6. The penetration on the second shot is 13.9. The penetration on the third shot, 14 inches even. And not that it matters that much, but the first shot exited the block at 12 inches exactly. So all three of them met the minimum normally Denim tends to increase penetration because the bullet expands less and because it's expanded less, there's less drag on the bullet so it's able to get deeper. But somehow it penetrated less in the denim than it did in the bear gel. In all of the cases it's a pass. In all of the cases it has good expansion. Although the fragmentation is less than ideal in the bear gel shot, it's still a pass. If there was nothing else available, and in these times there might not be, this wouldn't be a terrible choice. Let's get some of these out of here and take a look at them. Thanks to California EDC, who is tired of watching me finger the gel blocks. He provided these fancy little forceps so I can reach in there and grab a hold of both of these bullets as if I were a professional. That is very large expansion. That's ginormous. It's ugly. It's not very uniform at all. But that'll get her done as they, as they say. We will get some measurements on expansion and retained weight when we get home. Alrighty then, what did we learn? Well, the first thing which pops out at me is the velocity is kind of weak sauce. The average was 1148, which is a little warmer than 10 millimeter short usually produces in this same bullet weight, but not by much. I think it's fair to expect best millimeter to easily break 1200 feet per second with this barrel length and bullet weight. And there are some gonzo factory loads out there breaking 1300. But remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should. More speed isn't always better, and these gel test results indicate additional velocity would only result in greater fragmentation. The bullet is already very obviously beyond its design limitations. It came apart pretty substantially, and that isn't really a good thing for pistol bullets. It lost about half its weight, which would normally mean reduced penetration, but in this case the loss was so dramatic and so early it also reduced the frontal area to the point it actually penetrated more deeply than in the heavy clothing shot. We normally see heavy clothing cause increased penetration due to slower, more moderate expansion, which results in reduced drag, but this test was actually the other way around. And people often ask why we use four layers of denim, as that's not very realistic unless you're expecting to be attacked by Jay Leno. But it isn't supposed to be a realistic simulation of typical clothing. It is intended to represent a worst case scenario of closely packed fibers to determine whether the bullet is still capable of expanding if the cavity is clogged with fibers. And in this case, it was indeed able to expand. Although the fragmentation and weight loss are suboptimal, the penetration was ideal in both heavy clothing and bear gel. So, the bottom line here is this is an adequate choice for defense, even if it's not the best choice. 
The stunning high speed you see in this video was captured using a Phantom V642 graciously provided by Aimed Research. If you are interested in renting a Phantom or other high speed camera for your own ballistic or industrial projects, you can contact Aimed Research using the information down there in the doobly-doo. I hope you found this video informative or at the very least entertaining. If you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com give you night vision with that cool, refreshing, never bitter taste that goes down smooth, they also have mounts, lights, and all sorts of other gear to make you the bump in the night. And remember kids, if you are not already subscribed to the AR15.com YouTube channel, you make puppies cry and Captain America is quite disappointed in you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay in the know. I love you.